Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post-Watershed production. Welcome to the impenetrable labyrinth of large. You may enter through one of three doors. I must warn you that only one contains a true entrance, while another contains a man-eating tiger, and the third a bottomless abyss. But don't fret. All around you are clues to safe passage. Simply interpret the runes scratched on the wall closest to your heart, and follow their lead to find the silver tesseract hidden somewhere within. Only when you unlock this code will solutions become apparent. Did I mention the labyrinth is filled with traps? I am your devilish quiz master, Aaron Bliss, and next to me sits the impotent enigma himself, Mike Large. Impotent. Every week you uh, <coughs> find more and more interesting ways to cover me in glory. Uh huh. To cover you in glory. Better than what I cover you in, though, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, exactly. And I'm surprised you didn't re- retort with that you mean important enigma. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have. Uh, you wouldn't have ruined my uh, introduction like that. No, I wouldn't let you have your little uh, moment. You grows, you grows. Oh, so, you grows. <laughs> so, tonight's late night large. I think it's one of those late night larges. You know, we we have some we have some that are just silly, silly juvenile, infantile humour that just descends into nonsense. And some of them are really eye-opening and enlightening shows where we we learn a lot about certain subjects. I think tonight might be one of those. He grows. Because it's been something I've been meaning to deliberate on for a while. Tonight, Mike, our uh, our theme is puzzles. Uh huh. And we're going to try and unlock their. Uh, oh, here we go. We're going to try and Cue unlock the their mystery. Puns, here we go. What? Anyway. Just sort of, we're trying to ca- crack their codes and unlock their mysteries potentially. Yeah. Because of course puzzles are one of those things about life, both devised and naturally occurring, that man above all else has taken upon himself to solve. This is true. Being that man has the kind of reasoning capabilities that other okay. animals might not possess. M- yeah, man in, in general. Yeah, not necessarily. <laughs> Well, I know. I'm sure there are there are some people far more capable than others. Some people far less capable. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Anyway, a puzzle. We all know who they are. We're not naming any names. No this names. Week. No. Zero names. <laughs> Zero names. Zero names. No well, in fact, names. maybe maybe we'll drop some clues so you can figure out at the end which names we're talking about. All right. Yeah. No okay. Names. Well, a puzzle, as if we didn't know, is a problem or enigma that tests the ingenuity of the solver person who strives for the solution. In a basic puzzle, one is intended to put together pieces in a logical way in order to come up with the desired solution. Puzzles are often contrived as a form of entertainment, but they can also stem from serious mathematical or logistical problems. Hence why I said some puzzles, although maybe they're not they're not described that way, some puzzles are natural puzzles that occur that man seeks a solution for in order to make his or mankind's life or discovery at least easier or more impressive in such cases their successful resolution can be a significant contribution to for instance mathematical research solutions to puzzles may require recognizing patterns and creating a particular order For this reason, people with a high inductive reasoning aptitude may be better at solving those puzzles than others. And puzzles based on the process of inquiry and discovery to complete may be solved faster by those with particularly good deduction skills. Yes, well, uh, I happen to excel uh, in both those areas. (laughs) Inductive reasoning aptitude and uh, deduction skills. Do you even know what inductive reasoning means? Because I don't. <laughs> Obviously, because I excel in it. Uh, right, okay. Deducting speaks for itself, but maybe we should uh, just uh, 
for our own benefit, really, more than anything else. Whose benefit? Okay, here we go. Inductive reasoning is a measurable attitude for how well a person can identify a pattern within a large amount of data. So, there basically, Mike Large. I think um, some. I think that's the one that some people with forms of like autism and that are good at. Yeah, I've always been good. Or at really bad at. I can't remember. Do you think that's the same as seeing the bigger picture? Seeing the See bigger it? picture. Oh. Shut up. <clears throat> no, do you think that's the same as seeing the bigger picture when you're uh, dealing with a problem? Yeah, no, th- is it being able to step outside the forest and see in the trees? Yeah, I guess. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, if you want to put it like that. I mean, I'm, I, I, I quite naturally it's, it's see more, patterns in it's, in certain yeah, it's, forms of behaviour. It's whatever. more s- like being able to like, spot anomalies in data and shit. Well, it's not, not necessarily anomalies, is it? Oh, Common factors. What you're looking for. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, Mike, I thought we'd uh, just remind ourselves. It seems like the most rational place to start would be the basic types of puzzles that we might be aware of. Because puzzles come in all all types. They might be physical puzzles. They might it's be get physical. Sorry. Exactly. There's definitely puzzles and enigmas around the opposite sex. Are there? I can tell you that. No. It, they're quite. Simple. <laughs> it's quite. There's no puzzle. I I had a fit. Well. It's quite. It's quite simple. It's because you got a skeleton key. Isn't that right? Fucking. Get, no. get that's, what, that's what they call it anyway. Well, okay. Here we go. The uh, large number of puzzles that have been known to be created can be divided into categories. For example, a maze is a type of tour puzzle, to to introduce it. Other categories include construction puzzles, stick puzzles, tiling puzzles, transport puzzles, disentanglement, jigsaw, lock, folding, combination and mechanical puzzles. So, logic puzzles, for instance, use like a chessboard, and they give examples of knight's tour and eight queens. Mathematical problems such as the missing square puzzle. Now, something we're going to go into in a little bit more depth in a minute. Some of those, some of these uh, mathematical problems are described often as impossible puzzles. That sounds like a bit of an oxymoron, but we will, we will elucidate on that a little bit later. So, mechanical puzzles would be things like Rubik's cube, Soma cube, Tower of Hanoi, Burr puzzle, and what's known as impossible bottles. <laughs> Have you ever done a Rubik's Cube? I've attempted, and I don't know about you, but there's certain puzzles appeal to me. Like, I, I like to get really deep in them. When I see one, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm really up for finding the solution. Whereas something like a Rubik's Cube, I go into it half heartedly because I can't really sort of imagine how to solve it. So I'll give it like five or ten minutes, like spinning it various ways, and then I'll just give up. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like for instance, someone, if you if you met someone who was I don't know a word search addict, right, and then you gave him a book of Sudoku, he might he, you know he might get really really bored after five minutes and just put it down, and you'd be like, hey, I thought you loved puzzles, and he'd be like, no no no, I'm a word puzzle guy, you know I don't like math puzzles, I don't like number puzzles. He grows. So yeah, whichever ones appeal to you. Meta puzzles are apparently. Ollie Rodini used to be really good at Rubik's cubes, by the way. Just thought I'd throw that out there, give him a little shout. Fair what? enough. Shout out. W- what did you like? Hey, Sorry? Listening. Rubik's Cube. You used to be good at Rubik's Cubes. <laughs> nice. Did you see... I swear there was a link that somebody posted recently where some... Was it pornographic? If not, I probably didn't bother looking. No, no, no. People don't post pornographic links. I find pornographic links. Oh, people post them. <laughs> I fucking post <laughs> Yeah. We're well, not talking about uh, the Tor Network and, and your horrible little encrypted site. Well, perhaps we should. <laughs> Listen, <clears throat> Oliver Dini, I'm sure he's uh, very good, but is he as good as the guy that I believe created a Rubik's Cube that was like the size of a room? No. No, there you go. So, meta puzzles incorporate elements of different puzzles together, and they're often apparently found in puzzle hunts, which sound really fun. Paper and pencil puzzles. It's giving lots and lots of examples that sound connect like... Connect the dots, yay! Yeah, connect, connect the dots is perhaps a little bit, like, simple, but... Hey, there's nothing wrong with connect the <laughs> dots. I used to fucking love connect the dots. Yeah, but it's a, it's a certain level, isn't it? You, you you wouldn't go beyond primary school age trying to connect the dots. 
Uh, or even, uh, I don't think, I think you'd even go beyond nursery age to be quite. Oh, you still do? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> they, they include logic puzzles. A, a lot of them sound very Eastern type, like Japanese, Korean kind of puzzles. Mm. Very, uh, very kind of Asian minded. Very, extremely clever. Asian minded. Cle- extremely clever, I'd imagine. <laughs> uh, Peg Solitaire. Have uh, you ever so, played that? Uh, I'm, I just, you missed out some of the. Have you ever heard of any of those? Not really, that's why I didn't We've talk heard of about Sudoku. It. Y- well, yeah. That's only because it became a fad over here, isn't it? Mm. I'm good at Sudoku. I, okay, I actually, yeah, okay really let's good. talk about it. Let's talk about it for a second, because I'm going to come out and say I can't think of anything more dull and life-wasting than doing a whole book of Sudoku. Now... I can okay. I can understand if you like with you if you're on the shitter, which you often are. You have a newspaper, Fucking right? You have a newspaper. You fold it over. There's two or three different Sudoku puzzles, uh, each more fiendish than the last. Roll over them. Yeah. When you've got nothing better to do, sometimes, like you say, you give your brain a minor workout. But there's no character to Sudoku puzzles. It's it's literally. You, you know which number goes in what box it, it's not to me it's not that challenging how anyone could get satisfaction from doing a whole book of them I guess that's the way different people's minds work but yeah but that's like that's like doing word searches that's like finding a word that's already there for you yeah, all you're doing is reading oh well, yeah I agree no it's, it's pretty much the same yeah no I'm, I'm except it's more difficult yeah what Sudoku is more difficult than a word search yeah really of course it is what it is is ten columns. Yeah, actually, you and have you to have to put a different number in each column. All you have to do with the word search is find the word. I um, remember when Aaron, I was a kid Aaron, having word search books. Aaron, if you struggled, no, 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 that, no. There was always the <coughs> the odd word search where they'd been they basically cocked up and and the last yeah, word if it's impossible, they'd misprinted. Well, yeah, if it's a misprint, then obviously that's <laughs> fucking difficult because it's impossible. Look, anyway. Let's stop arguing about this and talk about Peg Solitaire. All oh, right, fine. <laughs> Go on then. Have you played Peg Solitaire? I was born. I can only that, vaguely man. remember it. It's one of those oh, Peg Solitaire. Is again, it's a horrifically dull game, to be quite honest, from what I remember. Moving pegs in a sequence, that kind of thing. Okay, picture puzzles such as sliding puzzles, like the fifteen puzzle jigsaws and variants such as Puzz 3D. Now, Mike, I heard you're a bit of a jigsaw fan. Yeah, but only uh, in the films. <laughs> I was about to say that. I don't know, it reminds me of my granddad. Really, jigsaws. I, I don't think I've ever understood the the appeal of jigsaws that are frighteningly complex. You know, based on, like, watercolour paintings and stuff. It's something to do, isn't it? It's just, it's, just, it's just another one of those, like a Sudoku or worse, uh, it's just a, a time taker upper. Upper. <laughs> Very well said, Mike. That's proper proper Cle- England, that is. Yeah, clear as feces. But I do love the idea of, like, impossible jigsaws. You know the ones that are, like, the- a mound of jelly beans or something? Or buttons. Yeah. You know those ones? Crazy. Coloured buttons. Very cool. You know, I'm just going to come out and say it. I had a, I had a jigsaw once that, that said two to four years on the box, and, you know, I completed it in a week. So... I'm just going to say that I'm a bit of a jigsaw king. Oh, oh fucking hell. But. Woo! You are have you, funny. <laughs> have you attempted, Mike, any of the 3D jigsaws? Now, they look pretty cool. I invented the uh, 3D jigsaws. Oh, yeah. How did you do that? I just got my knob out and. Oh, what? See what happened. Oh. <laughs> I grew in a three door, three door, <laughs> three door hatchback fell out, yeah. and then, oh, and then right. all of a sudden I invented. Uh, you grew in three, three dimensions, puzzles. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I've heard you grow in a fourth dimension as yet undiscovered. Fucking right. <laughs> Shut up. Sliding puzzles, Mike. Do you think that's the same as tile puzzles? I think so, because we often say that when we're at work, shifting cages around, it's a lot like a tile puzzle. <laughs> Yeah, well. You you have like a little niche that you're standing in, and the only way you can move a cage is where you're standing, so you then have to slide to the left or the right. Do you know what else is a puzzle oh that I we Grow think on. of sometimes as well? Go on. Tetris. That's a puzzle. If you think about is it. Is it a puzzle? If you think about it, it kind of is. Fitting blocks together in the best way. It's, it's type of puzzle game ish, I suppose. But there's not an ultimate solution, is there? Yeah, there is. Win. 
always have time for the Tetris theme tune. But what I'm trying to say, Mike, is all these other puzzles we're talking about, the goal is an ultimate solution where you can say, Shut up. Go on. There's, you know, you're working towards an ultimate goal. When you say, That's it, I've done it. You can sit back and go, I solved this. I am the king of the whatever it is. Do you not see that? Oh, he grows. Yeah, do you see what I'm saying? I grow. Tetris does not have, like, columns and, and Candy Crush Saga and all the things that ripped it off. That's fucking... But... Shit. Yeah, Ben Lewis. But these things don't have ultimate uh, answers to them, solutions. You, there's no point you can say, I completed the, the whole game, because the levels go on endlessly. And there are a million different ways to win. Right. Okay... Anyway, oh, I see where you got that. It was the next one down. Puzzle video game. Uh, Very good. I didn't actually read that. You preempted it, did you? I didn't actually read that. Right, okay. Yeah, puzzle video game. Can you think of any actual puzzle video games where there's an ultimate solution rather than just progressing from one level to the next? Uh, Bonus levels on Sonic? They're not really puzzles, are they? What about, um, I know, uh... More PC games, really, isn't it? Like, yeah. uh, you know, the, the Cluedo spoofs. Yeah. Who done it yeah. games. Or they have a lot of logical games and. and... Oh, what, what about, like, Minesweep and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, they're puzzles. I'm the top boy at that. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a puzzle. I'm a kiddie at that, I tell you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am the boy. And, of course, Video Solitaire. Yeah. The cards. Yeah, that's alright. I prefer Minesweep, mate. Oh, yeah. I am the fucking boy of that. I'll show you one, mate. I am. Okay. No, no. no, no Get it up. I'm not going to argue. Get it up. Shut up. Get it up. That's what she said. Get it up. Mike, have you heard of Sangaku? What the fuck is Sangaku? Is it a drink? Can I drink I have it? A, I, can I drink it? I have a feeling that, again, it's from Can there. I drink it, eat it, or fuck it? It's from South, if I can't. South East Asia. Japanese geometrical problems. Theorem. On wooden tablets which were placed as offerings oh. at Shinto shrines or Buddhist temples by members of all social classes. Interesting. They look very complex. I don't think we'd be very good at those. Uh, speak for yourself. Uh, Sokoban. Heard of that again? Uh, again, can I eat, drink, or fuck it? <laughs> oh. oh, that looks... It's... all. That's very cool. Oh, groovy baby. Soccer ban. It, it's like it's basically it looks like a video game version of tile puzzles. Do, 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 do. It's a type of transport that. puzzle in which a 2D character player pushes box or crates around a warehouse trying to get them into storage locations. And if you get what I mean with tile puzzles, mm, 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 obviously mm, 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 they can't immediately be pushed into uh, the locations that you desire because there are, you know, other boxes in the way, which you then have to shift around. So there's not an immediate, direct way of solving things. That's quite cool. That is very si- that's very similar. That's basically a moving tile puzzle. Okay, Mike, spot the difference. Ah, oh, you now. Must, I bet you love these, don't you? I was, uh, again, why am I so fucking good at everything? It's ridiculous. Uh, no, on the old, on the old, the trick not, of the on the old pub machines and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Spot a difference. Everyone's oh, playing Oh, yeah. Get large over here. Fuck <laughs> sake. Can't those, find it. I'll come over and write, yeah, there, those, there, there, and there. Those yeah. virtual spot the difference puzzles were, were stupid, though, because you get less and less time with each one, and then eventually it was actually physically impossible for you to get your fingers touching the screen enough time. Speak to, for yourself. Oh, uh, here we go again. <laughs> but spot the difference. Did you uh, did you ever play it like in in puzzle books or? Yeah, yeah. You said I, I was, I was uh, a fan yeah. of spot the difference. I did like spot the difference. I used to like it. Yeah. Yeah, I solve them quite often. What's a tangram? Bend over and I show you. <laughs> you wish. That's what she said. A tangram again. It sounds very Southeast Asia, and I'm I'm having a stab at. Oh, it's Chinese. Yes, it is a dissection puzzle. Ah, that's quite cool. I remember those. It grows. It reminds you a little bit. I swear we had something similar at primary school. Probably. A tangram puzzle for the uninitiated is one of those tile puzzles, wooden tile, wooden block puzzles, 
if you picture it, uh, there's a square sort of cut out of whatever, say a bit of a table, there's a square shape cut out, and then you'll give it a number of coloured blocks that are in very unusual shapes. For instance, there might be a very small triangle, a parallelogram, uh, an oblong, all kinds of different shapes. And the idea, obviously, is to slap, slot them all together in whatever kind of sequence to be able to have a comfortable square shape so all the blocks are comfortably fitting inside the square. So basically, yeah, so if you got a, a square tile and dropped it on the floor and it didn't shatter, say it, it broke into the you know, fragments. eight or nine fragments, and then you try and put them together. Yeah, when they're all completely different shapes. Yeah, obviously they're not going to break into identical. Well, it depends. Okay, we're now on to the daddies. My word puzzles, which include anagrams, crosswords, word searches, and ciphers. Come on, tell, tell us how you feel about these. Well, you know, I'm just going to come out and say it, although I can imagine what your reaction is going to be. Go on. Yeah, I'm pretty fucking good at them too. <laughs> um, yeah? I, I just, maybe it's just, I don't know, there, there are things I'm not good at, but <laughs> we just don't seem to stumble across them very often. No? Um, that's just, it, you know, you it's don't like do subtlety that, very and well. that's the way it is. Well, fuck subtlety. <laughs> Fuck subtlety. Bend it over and fuck it in the arse. Don't use, <laughs> don't use no lube. Fuck uh, it. Who cares about subtlety? Bite the pillow I'm going in dry. Yeah, fuck it. Say how it is. Interesting. So, which one's your favourite? What's your favourite kind of word puzzle? Um, uh, I'd probably say word searches because they're the easiest. <laughs> I was going to say word searches are my least favourite because they're just ridiculously easy. Well, you just tried to say they're harder than Sudoku. I think they are, but they're still ridiculously You're easy. You're an idiot. They're still ridiculously easy, Mike. Y you're ridiculously easy. Okay, uh, do you like ciphers? They're uh, uh, de they're they're uh, decrypting word codes. I I to be fair, actually, I'd probably like them more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, crosswords though. That's that's one that <laughs> crosswords bring people together, don't they? They're yeah. they're like the archetypal the British kind of my pastime my problem well, you know ciphers like you know figure it out you can't figure it out you can't fucking figure it out tough shit but figure it out mm. word searches the answers are there you just got to find them obviously mm. is in the words are there yeah crosswords they have the potential anyway to really fucking piss me off <laughs> because if, especially if it's something like what? a question comes up and you know you know that shit, but that shit ain't coming to you right now. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck? Why can't I remember this? And then you get really angry at yourself and you start throwing things and hitting people. And and then you get arrested. Ouch. Has that ever happened to you? It's or is that just me? All the time. I, I've lost count of the bloodbaths that have been created. I'm, I'm actually crosswords. being serious. That, I, I what about cryptic so crosswords? Angry. What about Again, the same. It's so angry if I know, I know, or have known the answer at some point, yet now, when I need that otherwise seemingly useless information, I can't recall it. It really fucking grinds on me. Alright. So I tend to avoid doing them for that reason, in case I come across uh, Fair enough. something that's bound to wind me up. Anagrams? Because I've noticed that there's those bloody phone apps where... You uh, you have to sort out anagrams. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They're all right. They're all right. Anagrams are getting fairly easy, really, aren't they? They are Compared generally. Generally, yeah. But I mean, I had a period. I had a period like a year, yeah. and a year and a half. To, very funny. I had a period about a couple of years ago where I got really into crosswords because we sold uh, we sold those miniature puzzle books at work that had like fifty crosswords in. I got. I had a period where I I used to enjoy doing those. Huh. Went through them, did it with uh, did it with the X, that kind of thing. That's nice. I know. It, it sounds weird though, doing crosswords together. It sounds like another interesting story. We were we went into a local rock and metal pub a few weeks ago. Music's pounding, really loud. Everyone's really raucous and drunk. And there was an old guy in the corner doing a crossword. <laughs> and at one point, I think he fell asleep. 
Oh dear. It was like someone falling asleep on the battlefield. <laughs> it, it was hilarious. Like calm amongst the storm. Poor uh, grow. I'm sure he didn't grow. Don't be a puffin. Listen to Late Night Large. Uh, Mike, have you heard of the anagram jigsaw? Apparently it's a jigsaw puzzle where pieces are rearranged for two correct solutions. Oh, okay. You know heard of those? Uh, well, I probably... I've heard of double-sided jigsaws. Point. Yeah. Where they have pictures on both sides. Oh. Um, interesting. They, they seem to take up far too much time. But, uh, well, each to their own. Indeed. Indeed. I thought we'd, dis- we'd discuss... Before we go on, we discuss, my reasons... Reasons why people get involved in puzzles. What what do people crave from a puzzle? What do they derive from it? Okay. Satisfaction of Hold problem on. solving. Hold on, you Peter Fowler. Quench Listen. their thirst for. Listen, it quench their thirst for, for jizz. Solve their existential angst. Here we go. I've come up with Here we grow. a few reasons. Here we grow. Here we grow. Uh huh. I've come up with a few reasons. Uh-huh. See if you can add to them. A bit of brain testing. You know, exercise the mind. Bit especially brain training, like yeah, the old especially game. If you're, especially if you're of the older generation. You want to keep your brain nice and lucid. And All you've seen are motherfuckers. Right. Okay, other reasons. Perhaps even life or death. I'll give you an example of life or death puzzles. I think you should. You're, uh, you're in a labyrinth. Labyrinth. You, you step in, in. You step into a room. <laughs> you step into a room, and there's three objects on a table... As you as you go to pick up an object, what are they? The door behind you slams. What are the I'll tell you in a second. Okay. The door behind you slams. Yeah. The objects are a block of wood, right? An apple, right? And a dagger. Which one have you just picked up? I don't know yet. The door slam. But tell me which one. I okay, picked you've up. touched the apple and the picked door. Picked up the apple and the door slams. Right. So there's a bit of wood. And all of a sudden, and, apple, and, uh, and unfortunately, the uh, the room is windowless. Nice. And the second that the door slams, uh, you also see the walls close again. Okay. So there you go, that's an example of how a puzzle won't be life or death, because perhaps there's a solution on the table that prevents you from being... What, you put one down and you pick one up? I don't know, maybe. That's the puzzle, isn't it? You don't know. But one thing's for sure, if you don't solve, or don't attempt to solve any kind of a puzzle, then you're going to be crushed to death, so... That's a life or death scenario. Uh, monetary reward is a pretty obvious... solution? I didn't come up with a solution yet. Well, I think you should. So, we'll, we'll see if we can get it before the end of the show. Well, I want a solution. Monetary reward. Okay. okay. Do this number one. Your grand. Number one. Yeah, or Treasure Hunt is a, is a great example. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, as we're going to describe in a minute, there are there have been some very big prizes for certain puzzles. Some that have never been won. The puzzles are so difficult. Of course, personal gratification. Oh, that's an obvious one. You know, yeah. if you just buy a little book of Sudoku or, or uh, crosswords... You fucking nail it. Yeah, you're just like, oh, still got it. Yeah. Pretty, pretty smart cookie. Yeah, my large, top boy. Okay, and on the same lines as that, but a little bit more, uh, I don't know, arrogant, or a little bit more attention-seeking, peer approval. Yeah. You hey, might look what I did. Yeah, or, you know, you could all be drunk at a party, and there's a there's a puzzle lying around, and, you know, there's there's some... There's a woman you like or something. Some honeys. Yeah, you're just like, oh, I, I don't worry, I'll solve this. What's her name? Uh, honey. Honey. What's she like? Uh, morbidly obese. Yeah. Terrible skin. Yeah. Flatulent. Yeah. And bold. What's a bra size? <laughs> uh, did I mention she's got no limbs? What's her bra size? <laughs> Can you think of any other reasons why What's people might size? shut off? <laughs> Can you think of any other reasons why people might do puzzles, Mike? Depends what a bra size is. So, no, basically. Any other reasons why people would do Why do you do puzzles? Boredom. You're bored. There you go, yeah. Okay. Loneliness. Yeah, slightly different from... Mm, okay, yeah, you, you focused on the negatives there, but like you say, it sometimes serves a purpose in there, it fills your so, time. Sometimes it can uh, do... In, seemingly meaningless tasks like that can actually help with uh, anxiety if you're feeling anxious about something you take Ah, your mind off it concentrate on so you're you're talking about catharsis and therapy through through solving puzzles like you said earlier perhaps with autistic people or people with some kind of other uh, mental disorder or social disorder maybe yeah I've heard it yeah I've heard of situations where like you say people with bad anxiety or 
other social disorders that, or maybe like attention deficit disorder, for instance. Yeah. Maybe if you give them some difficult puzzles to get stuck into, all of a sudden the mind that is like a Pandora's box all of a sudden becomes focused like a laser beam and they stay quiet and they they focus on the problem at hand mm. also do you think that that oh, go on. I was going to say do you think that 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 tapping into that potential po- possibly could solve some big problems for the human race could do like you know say you need to solve a mathematical or scientific equation of some kind and you find someone who has a br- brilliant potential intellect, but like you say, has ADD or is violent or antisocial, and you present them with a puzzle to solve. Maybe that focuses all their negative energy, and all of a sudden you've harnessed it to the benefit of mankind. Potentially, if that's not a uh, bit too uh, another, over the top. maybe a little bit. Another reason I was going to say was obviously national security. Yeah, as in, as in yeah, whatever. encrypting, yeah. encrypting sensitive information. Well, have you seen Mercury Rising? Yes. There we go. That's an example, isn't it? Yep. Because anyone who hasn't seen it, basically, a little autistic boy solves a supposedly impenetrable puzzle, like the, the most difficult. You know, it's. it's uh, I thought it was quite easy. Was it in a newspaper? <laughs> was it in a newspaper it was, or a yeah. puzzle book? Yeah, a newspaper. Oh, uh, no, puzzle book. It was in a puzzle book. It was in like they a... They put it in there just a, for Yeah, like, pretty obscure geez. puzzle book. It, basically, they were testing the waters. What happened was they encrypted this very sensitive code uh, for an American secret or something. And it sounds stupid, but they put it randomly in a puzzle book, in the middle of a puzzle book, in amongst other puzzles... And the reason they did it was literally just to set their minds at ease that it was impossible to solve. Because they had a hotline that people would call to basically speak the solution over the phone. And they knew that and the call would be diverted to them if that particular puzzle was solved. So they knew that if they as long as they didn't receive an outside call on that line, their uh, you know, the the coding was completely secure. And this little boy solved it, thus resulting in America doing but what it does what best. Did he, what did he have? I think it was just extreme autism, wasn't it? Something similar. I think he was autistic. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a decent film, anyway. What about Mike? What about situational puzzles? What's your thought on these? These are often referred to as lateral thinking puzzles. Yes, no puzzles. Situational puzzles are usually played in a group with one person hosting the puzzle and the others asking questions which can only be answered with a yes or no answer. That sounds like 20 questions. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, I guess. Mm. Although, depending on the settings and the level of difficulty, other answers, hints or simple explanations of why the answer is yes or no may be considered acceptable. The puzzle is solved and one of the players is able to recite the narrative the host had in mind, in particular explaining whatever aspect of the initial scenario was puzzling. Hmm... Oh, hang on, that sounds a bit like, uh... That sounds a bit like Mind Trap. In Mind Trap, they have basically what you'd refer to as a riddle. Riddle me this? Yeah, riddle me this. Which is a scenario. A very, uh, you know, a strange scenario. Like a short story. So you describe a strange scenario, and then you finish it with a fiendishly tricky question about the scenario. And people can only ask trying to derive a yes or no answer to to come to the conclusion of, of what the solution is. You get me? He grows, he grows. Yeah, okay. Some good shit. I was going to say, because uh, we used to play on Mind Trap a lot, and it is quite an entertaining game. Dingbats is another one Aww. for word and picture puzzles. Guess who's the kitty? Guess who? No. Oh, <laughs> guess who? Guess who? Yeah. yeah, guess who? It's hardly a great puzzle. No, but guess who's the kitty at Dingbats? You, by any chance. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, it's so so difficult uh, to work people out. People, you can it? ask. I can, people it. can back this up. Okay, sure they can. They can ask him. Look, anyway, I ask Eric. Old Eric Smith. No, we'll be right back. Late Night Large presents random pages you found on the internet that you're not sure whether to believe. Today, facts you'd rather not have known. In an average day, your hands will have come into indirect contact with 15 penises. We're talking about puzzles. On everyone's favourite. Everyone 
puzzling show. Mike, have you heard of the concept of impossible puzzles? I mean, I'm I told, sh- told them we were going to get root deep in them soon, or right? You have to understand that impossible isn't a word that I, <laughs> you know, normally go with. Familiar with. No, okay, well, uh, there's a number case. of there's a number of quite notorious, like universal impossible puzzles. Yeah, that are supposed to be, but yeah. Now, okay, uh, you might actually have heard of a couple of these. We'll only discuss a couple because otherwise we've gone forever. Uh, have you heard of the three cups problem? Uh, he grows. No, I get that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it rings bells. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Basically, the impossible problem is you have three cups. Two of them are, I believe, face up, and one is face down. And the idea is you need to get all the cups face down in six moves or less. But you have to move at least two cups at the same time. Or, no, sorry, you have to move only two cups at the same time. In other words, it's it's not so much an impossible puzzle as a really stupid kind of mathematical I told you so. Because, of course, if you move two cups at the same time, you're always moving an even number of cups. And an even number plus an even number is always an even number, not an odd number. Thus, you can never get all three facing the same way. So it's an impossible puzzle. No. The only way to do it is if you have two that are already face up mm. or face down, whichever one we said. No, Mike, yeah. what about the uh, water, gas, and electricity puzzle? This is one I actually remember. Okay, uh, what is this? Okay, here we go. It's a classic math puzzle again, known as the three utilities problem or the three cottage problem. Here we go. Suppose there are three cottages on a planar sphere and each needs to be connected up to gas, water and electricity. Using a third dimension or sending any of the connections through another company or cottage is disallowed. Is there a way to make all nine connections without any of the lines of connection crossing each other? It's actually intended as an abstract maths puzzle and imposes constraints that would be n- not be issues in a practical engineering scenario. It if you look at it, the 2D, the 2D uh, example, it makes a lot of sense. I've seen those puzzles before because it gives the cottages as dots, and then the connections as as just lines going across each other. So there's varying varying puzzles like this, but of course it's impossible to connect the three cottages no, with the three different utilities without at least one of the connections crossing another. No, it's not. Shut up. It's not. No, no Mike, that's a fact. No, it's Shut not. up. It's not. Oh, whatever. Anyway, it's not a fact. We might come to, we might come to paradoxes another time. I don't think we have time to discuss them on tonight's puzzle show. But puzzle books, Mike. I'm going to go right into the number one. Where's Wally? Oh, did you used to? Right. Did you used to play Where's Wally? Yeah, I used to love Where's Wally. It's a bit like Spot the Difference, really, isn't it? In yeah, the, you're looking for something sm- <laughs> it's Wally oh yeah and you've got to find him and you don't know where he is I heard you play where's a similar Wally? I heard you play a similar game with uh, your lady friends where's like the sausage where's Wally <laughs> yeah <laughs> where's <laughs> Wally <laughs> oh, that sounds such a sex pest game yeah that's why I love it okay have you heard Mike have you heard about uh, Maze right it's a very famous puzzle book it was called the world's most challenging puzzle <laughs> No, 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 seriously, this is very cool. It was in the 80s, because as, as we know, one of the cultural things in the 80s was the rise of the nerd. Dungeons and Dragons, and especially Puzzles and Quizzles. Uh, puzzles puzzles puzzle and Quizzles, and quizzles. <laughs> I like puzzles that. Puzzles and Quizzles. It's, yeah, it sounds like a kind of Lord of the Rings version. No, 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 Quizzes and Puzzles. Maze was a book that was published originally in 85, in America, I think. Puzzle book written and illustrated by uh, Christopher Manson. And it was published originally with a contest attached. You could win $10,000 from solving the puzzle. But it was a multi-layered puzzle because the book was supposed to represent a building or a maze. And each chapter was supposed to be a room. There were 45 different rooms, i.e. pages, in the book. In addition, the doors in each of the rooms led to other rooms. With this structure established, it challenged the readers to solve three tasks. Number one, to journey from number one 
to room 45 and back to room 1 in only 16 steps. To interpret the riddle hidden in room 45 based on vision and verbal clues within and to find the solution to this riddle hidden along the shortest possible path found in the first task. Is that clear? <laughs> yeah, but that actually does sound pretty difficult. <laughs> oh, it was. Anyway, yeah, $10,000 was the prize. And in the end, nobody could solve all three. But the $10,000 was shared between 12 contestants who each solved two of the facets. They discovered the correct path and got there in you know the required number of steps but not the ultimate solution to the riddle yeah Christ so there you go and I believe I was reading about another impossible puzzle actually that never got solved and that was an even bigger prize I think $75,000 really? but you know if you give away that kind of money it's got to be no, incredibly I difficult I could solve it right okay have you heard of puzzle jewellery? Uh, jewelry shaped like puzzles. No, puz puzzles that are made into jewelry, so they are actually functional oh, puzzles. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think like mechanical puzzles. Another thing, Mike, I went to uh, I went to a, a pretty marvelous party a few weeks back. Oh yeah, and There's they my invite, my <laughs> shut up. They uh, yeah, the couple we visited, they're really into uh, at the moment. Sex. Shut up. Uh, is they're into um, especially Japanese but other similar porn <laughs> physical puzzles oh, right. like puzzle boxes oh, okay. have you ever played any of them no. we got given a couple of them they're not necessarily boxes obviously some of them are shaped like stars some, yeah, of, yeah, some yeah, of them yeah. are, are hoops that are linked together oh yeah he grows and yeah, the, yeah, I, yeah, the yeah, idea is right. you have to keep trying to manipulate them until you find a solution which is usually unlocking the interlocking yeah, pieces going, or I've, not bad at them usually yeah you get them out of like Christmas crackers and shit yeah but I'm talking about like these are kind of hand finished crafted by no, artisans sure they're yeah they're, they're uh, apparently they have levels of difficulty as well they get given like numbers assigned numbers mm. of how difficult they are I solved the one I was given which apparently was basically one of the more simple simple ones little puzzle box have you ever heard of the nightmare box no oh it's very cool it's not actually a puzzle at all, to be honest. It was based on a, a short story, but it was still quite cool. It, w it was a box that had a had a little peephole riveted oh, yeah, into that's it. Oh, kind of box. Yeah, and uh, whoever looked into it uh, instantly lost their minds. And there you go. The puzzle was why did it happen? But you'll have to read to find out. It was uh, it was a short story as part of a bigger book by Chuck Palahniuk called Haunted. So yeah, the nightmare box. And of course, let's not forget one of the greatest puzzle boxes in Hellraiser. What was that called? The the puzzle in Hellraiser that that when you when you in you you manipulated the right way and it it, it opened up or closed that the uh, portal to hell was opened. E oh, what was that called? Hang on, let me have a look. Um can we think of it? Can we think of it? I'm gonna have to. It, no, it only describes it as a puzzle box. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to bottle it. Okay, but uh, there it is. Couldn't find my feet. Now that's an example of something you don't really want to solve. <laughs> you know, because well. some some of these uh, some some of these puzzle boxes are quite mystical, especially from you know Arabian areas. You might you might release a deadly genie that, that's here to destroy us all. Or so be careful about these puzzle boxes. You never know which ones to trust. And of course, we didn't really have time to talk about riddles. Riddle miss was which is another example of a puzzle, verbal puzzle. But interesting kind. Yeah, and and of course we didn't really talk about we didn't talk much about visual puzzles like magic eye or symmetrical puzzles. We didn't have enough time. We didn't have enough time because it's such an interesting subject. We've grown out of time. We have grown out of time. Anything else to say before next week, Mike? Except for riddle me this. Oh. Uh, piddle me this. <laughs> Shut up. Well, I was going to come up with a, a fantastic verbal puzzle to end on, but 
I'm a lot smart to be honest. So uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna say uh, Mike's gonna be uh, Mike's gonna be off now to play with his puzzle box. Yeah, boy. 